quite a fun question. So, in the last convention, who was it that you had that had the uh, key technique for fangirls that used to just wave keys and call them? That sounds like a Tatum thing. Yeah, that sounds like a Tatum thing. What's your technique? For dealing with for what fangirls? Yeah, if, if you. Basically, long story short, Tatum, if, some, if someone comes up and gets a little bit too excited, he just jingles his keys. <laughs> and goes, la, 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 This la, la, is a true story. There was actually someone in the audience who had this happen. Do you, do you have, like, do you have a set technique for dealing with over-the-top weeaboos? No. Because I am an over-the-top weeaboo, so I guess I just don't notice. We're all over-the-top weeaboos! Yeah. It's like, this is, this is, these are my people. I... I'm just a geek that landed a cool job. They pay me to scream at televisions. <laughs> like, like, but like, no. I mean, so like, it, 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 like people, and that's the thing. I have the same issue answering the question. Like, people be like, "What's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you at a con?" Or like, "What's the weirdest or scariest fan story?" Or weirdest. It was just like, I don't get weird moments because nothing phases me. Oh, like, okay. If you came up at me with like the only the only cosplayers that sometimes will get me are you know the the show Future Diary, so like the the you know Gossai cosplayers like she's basically considered like I guess like the the source of all Gandare, so like all the girls that come up to like with like I would kill for my man type thing that type of character that is carrying knives and stuff around it those are the cosplayers I'm just kind of like okay hang on is That's the knife the, real yeah. okay no all right we're good but other than that. Any other questions? Looks like we got some hands on. Lady in the purple? Lady in the purple. Teddy bear. Teddy bear. Okay. And this hand here? No. You, you want to dance for her? All right, cool. So after the purple hair, the girl right in the one front. Yeah, could you just hand the mic to her once we're done? Jackie, do you think Josh Brown would make a good joke? I think he'd make an amazing joke. Uh, thank you. Like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Ah, uh, hello. I would love to. Oh my god, you want to talk about like following in my hero? My, my biggest voice acting hero has, of my life is Mark Hamill. So like... Why, why do you think I do a Mark Hamill joke? I understand, dude. Like, I get it. Hi. Hello. Um, over the years you've done a lot of comedy roles. Yes. yes. Do you, is it that you tend to go for those roles or is it that you're more happy in those roles? I think a lot of it has to be like, uh, I think it's twofold. First off, uh, when I started in theater, uh, I was already a big kid, and, and so a lot of times, like in theater, especially community theater, uh, you know, a lot like television. If you're not the super pretty, like you know, or you know, very masculine, like whatever, you're probably not going to get a lead in a play or something. It, it's very physically based. Uh, so a lot. So I got, had a lot of comedic relief roles growing up in theater. So like I. My, the majority of my theater career was either comedic roles or musicals. And even in the musicals, I would play comedic characters. So it's just, like, I really honed my comedic time and my comedic performance as a result of that. When I first started doing voice work, though, for the first two years or so, all I did was bit parts and villains. And I loved it because, I, you know, I'd never done that before. But then when I went to Funimation, the first role that they ever heard me in was Kenichi. And while there's a lot of action in the show, Kenichi is also a very high-energy, very comedic character. And like, I was able to do that very, very well. Uh, but in this industry, when a studio discovers you, you're usually going to be pigeonholed into whatever the first role that you did for them was. And that was the case with Funimation, where they're just like, oh, he plays young, funny characters. So they cast me as the young hero and everything, which for anime, that's not a bad gig. I, I just like, I, I would never have gotten that on stage. So it's really cool that I get to do that. But it also meant that I, they weren't using me to my full potential. So like, I, I think uh, one of the big reasons why I've, I've had so many comedic and especially like harem comedies and stuff like that over the years is just because of that. I'm, I'm you are really good at it. Well, thank you very much. Very good. I'm glad. It's, I, I've always loved making people laugh. So it's, it's, it's a... It's, it was really cool that I get to do that. But thank you for the question. Uh, any more questions? Shall we come down here somewhere? We have one, one someone yeah, straight up in head. Right here. Straight up. Go on. Just have a quick one, Marjorie. Let's go. Yeah, have it. How do you protect your throat? How do you keep your throat going when you've got, like, 
six hours of screaming? Uh, well, there's physical things you can do, and then there's just prep. So, like, almost every day before, a, if a session, if I know it's going to be screaming, I do a vocal warm-up. It takes about half an hour. Uh, and I look and sound ridiculous while I do it. Uh, so that's always fun. But, uh, I'm constantly drinking this. Like, I probably, if, if I have a six-hour day, I'm probably going to go about... I'll probably drink about 10 to 12 of these in that six hour period. And uh, um, other than that, there's a physical technique you can do. So like, uh, one of the first things that you're taught when you start doing voice work and you start working in the booth, has anybody in the audience ever worked professionally like in a recording booth or anything like that or with a microphone? One or two, all right, cool. Um, so do you know this technique? All right, cool. This. Basically, it's just a very easy way to measure how far you want the microphone to be from you if you're just talking normally. So if I was just doing a normal show, that's this is roughly the distance I want the microphone to be. If I'm going to scream, and I want it to sound good, but I also don't want to completely blow my voice or anything, I'll usually go about this distance, and then maybe a little bit further back, maybe not even barely an inch. And then I'll aim my neck down. Because the other thing, you like, you never want to do this. You never want to do this when you're screaming. You know, even though there's so many characters, like you watch Dragon Ball or something, Peter or someone powering up, it's always, it's like you start throw your head back and just scream for all your worth. But that is the most dangerous thing you can do as an actor because you're stretching your vocal cords to their limit, and then you're also making them vibrate super hard and push a lot of air over them, and it just, it tears them up. Uh, same with just doing normal. So I'll angle my head down, and that's a physical way that just completely relaxes, relaxes the vocal cords, relaxes everything here. And, I, and you scream from the gut, never from your chest. Uh, you scream from the chest, and it's just going to reverberate your throat, and it's going to have that feeling of like, oh, I'm, I'm ripping my throat apart or whatever. But if you scream from the gut, then you, there's really there's almost no interaction with your vocal cords. So that's a nice way to keep yourself going for hours and hours and hours on end. Very technical, not necessarily exciting stuff. Yes, who was your voice actor? Who's your favorite? Oh, we did. Uh, yeah, we. Uh, did you miss the start? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I already did that. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown. I only have five: Kenichi, Kurunosuke, uh, Armin, Yuri, Grand Priest. Next question. Where are we going? Uh, Let this little, uh, this young lady right here in the cave. The, the flag. <laughs> Heroes have capes. <laughs> Heroes do have capes. If you could be in any anime, what would you be in? If they ever made any more Slayers, I would be in Slayers immediately. I don't care if it's a little bit part, a bandit that just comes in on one frame and gets shot with a magic spell by the lead actress. And I Team Rocket's blasting off again off the screen, ding, and I'm gone forever. I would be totally fine with that, just so I can say, I was in Slayers! But other than that, um, I really wanted to be in the new Star Blazers, and I actually just got cast as a part in that, so that's really cool. Uh, any sort of space stuff. If they ever made a Star Wars anime, I would do horrific things to be in that show. Like, I, I would... I would do anything to be in that show. Even, again, even if it's just a stormtrooper getting shot or cut with a lightsaber or something and then I'm gone. It would just be so cool to say, I was a part of Star Wars. Thank you. No one else? We got some people up here. We've got yeah, Luke, we've got Satan himself up top. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, so when you're recording them, you get a script for whatever mm -hmm. you're doing. Yes. Um, all the lines that turn up in the show, mm -hmm. are they all in the script or do you improvise some things like some of the jokes that you make, do you improvise those, are they all pre-written from translation sort of thing? Uh, from the, for the most part, most of the stuff that's, that you that end up in the show was stuff that was in the script. And we always adapt from the translation, like we'll have the translation, like the subtitled version, and then a writer, which I used to do the, the script writing for them too for about 10 years. Uh, will take that translation, that subtitle translation, and you know, watch the show, make sure that whatever we're writing fits the mouth flaps, sounds natural, makes the timing and stuff. But we also try to get back some of the the humanity that's lost in the translation to subtitle, because sub subtitles are so truncated that you're losing a lot of subtext. 
So we try to write those back in so that you can get them, but uh, for the most part, you, we don't really get to improv much. Sometimes you'll say something funny in the booth and the director might think, oh, okay, that's kind of funny, we'll get that as a bomb or something for somebody, but they won't deviate, they won't do anything like that. But the show I'm, there's a show I'm working on right now, this season, the new season of High School DX Me, uh, as Issei, and that is the only show that they will let me improv. They will let me improv, they will let me just do whatever. If I if I see something in a scene and I think I might have a funny line or something, I'll just throw it out. And half, like a good portion of my jokes so far, these first five episodes, have just been me BSing in the booth. That they're just like, that's even funnier than the script, let's use that one. So, <laughs> the writers must love you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you're voicing characters that you've seen and you've loved before, like from the sub, do you take inspiration from how their Japanese voice actors have done their characters, like, that sort of way as well? To the, like, in a, in a way. Uh, I don't think anybody... I think just doing, like, a an impersonation or something is a disservice. Like, both two ways. It's a disservice for the fans who are going to watch it, because if all they're hearing is an impression, there's, there's no acting behind it, there's no character behind it. It's just me trying to sound like another human being in a different language. And that just, it doesn't come across, it, it never plays when people try that. It ends up sounding very flat and unnatural. And that's what so many people have considered bad dubs, you know, since the late 80s, is just people that read the stuff and don't act. Um, but then, then the other thing is it's doing a disservice to myself because I have an opportunity to take this character and put a little bit of myself into it and, and like try to you know see where it's coming from and actually live it out actually you know play with it instead of just going in and reading lines and, and so, like if all I'm doing is going in and just reading and doing an imitation then like I'm not having any fun doing that and it's going to sound like I'm not having any fun doing what I'm doing it's just going to sound flat and emotionless and I would prefer that you watch the sub at that point so yeah I, I would much rather like yes to an extent all of us take cues from what the Japanese did. Obviously, we don't want, if you have a little girl character, you don't want it to sound like a 50-year-old woman or something. So, like, and, uh, and, we, and we never, like, we don't want to deviate from the character's personality. Because then that's changing the character, and that's, all, again, that's doing a disservice, and it's not faithful to the Japanese. So, the best way that I've ever been able to explain it is just... Uh, I'm, in a way, paying homage, but I'm also doing it my way. In kind of the same way that whenever you've gone to theater, if you've ever been to a theater production, like uh, to Shakespeare, and you've seen Julius Caesar, that actor up there is not going to be the first person that's ever played Julius Caesar, but they're also not going to just do an impression of an actor that's done it beforehand. They want to do their own take on it. So, like, it's, it's very much the same thing. When you're doing your own take on it, does it... Do you, does it come to you straight away as to what you want to do with it? Or do you think, oh, how am I going to be able to make this different enough for it to not be a copy of the... Yeah, for, it, for a lot of comedic characters, it's usually just, I go with my gut. Because if I overthink it, then it's not funny. Um, but for a lot of other characters like Armin or Yuri and stuff like that, like, there, there were a lot of scenes where I really had to stop and think about like, okay, what, is the, what are they thinking at this moment? What are they feeling at this moment? What is this? What am I taking from this? What am I feeling? And how can I reconcile this too and, and make it a performance? So like, yeah, there, there is sometimes there's, uh, there's a lot of legwork that goes into it, a lot of gnashing of teeth, and sometimes you end up doing something 20 times before y'all get it just right. But there are, then there's also a lot of times where like with DXD or anything like that, it's usually one or two takes and we get it because we just, we trust ourselves and I trust my gut. It ends up being the right read. Who do you want next? The girl next to her's got a question, uh, and then oh, we can go up, and then we'll go up to uh, to uh, the devil up at the top. Ah uh, yes, we've also got um, a lady in armor there. Oh, we do. Okay, and we got the lady in armor too. We'll get to her in a second. Hello. Hi. Um, so and if more you people. Didn't voice Tokoyami in My Hero. Who would you have gone? Yes, Tokoyami, Dark Shadow. Yes, I'm here. Um, I don't know. I really like Tokoyami. Like, I didn't know much of the cast, and then uh, I just I just randomly got... I remember auditioning for it. And I auditioned for Deku, I auditioned for... Uh, I didn't go for Byakuya, or... No, for uh, Bakugo. Um, I think... 
think I might have auditioned for um, the little purple dude, the great Minetta. Minetta, thank you. Yeah. So, but uh, no, I'm so glad that I got Tokoyami. Uh, just be, I mean, like, I've never played a character with a bird head before. Uh, so that's really fun. Um, you get to make a lot of jokes. There's, there's a lot of jokes at cons I can make about this. We actually did a My Hero, uh, the premiere for season three at a con in back home called Anime Boston, just uh, last month. It's one of the biggest that we have over there. And we had this big panel with uh, me and Monica Real and uh, Justin Reiner and Clifford Shapin for the show. And uh, thank you guys for coming, have fun. Um, I got to just be up there as Tokoyami, and I just I just kept making jokes about like, well, somebody asked like, if your character wasn't a hero, what would they be doing? And I was like, he'd probably be either a bouncer in a nightclub or some sort of death metal singer. And I re then all of a sudden I was just like, I really want to make like an album of Tokoyami just singing death metal songs of like lullabies. Like, can you hear can you hear me and my shadow being done like the. <laughs> Would be a lot of fun. So, yeah. Here we go. We've got one person here. You know what? You just go whoever, however you need to to get to people.